This is Season 3 of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's regular podcast, where the team roping world talks. We've told the stories of some of the greatest cowboys, horses, and moments in the sport, and we're so far from done. In 2020, we'll bring you more of what you've come to expect, like interviews with the best cowboys and cowgirls we know, and we'll dive even deeper into subjects you care about. Look for more audio editions of the Team Roping Journal stories you might have missed in print, and learn about the great horses shaping the sport and great challenges facing our industry. All this and more in 2020. I'm Chelsea Schaefer. California's Spencer Mitchell, a two-time Wrangler National Finals Rodeo qualifier, is taking this COVID-19 downtime to focus on his heading. Mitchell is taking the time to share some tips on how to approach your roping to make it consistent and how to achieve a goal while roping the dummy. Hey everybody, this is Spencer Mitchell here. I'm trying to come to you guys today with a few different approaches as far as making your roping more consistent and achieving a goal while you're roping the dummy. Everybody's kind of on lockdown with different weather and things and I wish everybody the best. And hopefully these tips and slight pointers can give everybody something to work on while we're all on downtime. But I just want to bring to you a few of the ways that I personally work on roping the dummy to adjust my roping and then other aspects that I've learned from people along the way and just different approaches on what you're trying to accomplish. So hopefully this will be some help to you. I first like to start roping the dummy. Personally, I've roped it for so, so long in my life that I like a lot bigger horns that have a little bit of rise up in them, not too much. And to me, that makes you focus on your tip, where your tip's going to, and also that you have to keep your swing open and level in order to cover the plane of the horns. I always start start my day by walking up to it really close and basically going back to fundamentals of a really big open swing that I was taught young to reach out to the right as far as you can and extend all the way across over towards your head. By that, you're reaching past the right horn and across to the left horn, and you just slowly come out of that without trying to throw hard or anything and really finish that, that delivery all the way across there, and you can watch your rope do all the work for you. See the motion that it's making, and at the same time, it loosens your arm up to where you just get back to making that motion of that big circular swing. For me, a lot of people like to try and rope the dummy to make their loop hit tighter and faster, at times in the game, that is that is very crucial, but in the long run, our number one goal is to catch. Whether we catch horns, we catch a neck, our job as a header is to catch the steer and turn him. Once we get him caught, we can worry about our handle as far as whether we have a neck, a half header, the horns caught. So by trying to open our swing up on the dummy, it gives us a, a lot bigger area that we can reach the cow from by having our swing, whether he's to the left of us, the right of us, or straight ahead of us, if we have the proper swing, we can catch him. And that's the number one goal. Um, having it look pretty when it catches is awesome. But then again, I like a neck just as much as I do the horns. And if feel that a person handles correctly, that it's just as good. From there, I like to slowly step back just to a comfortable spot where you'd basically be jackpotting from. And the same thing, never try and go fast or fast or hard with my swing. Keep it slow and fluent and smooth all the way through the horns. Typically, most of the time when we get on our horses, our adrenaline gets pumping, our horses are running, their feet are moving, and our swing is going to get a little faster. And as it gets faster, it's going to get tighter. So for me, I always use the dummy to slow down my swing, to slow down my delivery and really focus on where my loop is hitting on the dummy and concentrating on having it that swing cover the horns all the way across. Staying in the same position, I try and really focus on the end of my delivery by being confident when I start my throw and I end my delivery right behind the left horn, I'll sit there and just wait for my slack to come, not try and beat it to make it snap on the horns, just let it be slow and smooth. Then again, that's all we're trying to do is relay our time down. 
And that's because as we move back farther, we're always going to have a tendency to try and throw harder, to tr throw faster. So I try to use the up close and that intermediate range to slow myself down and really focus on, I say my target, but at the same, also along with that, people want something to focus on. For me, the steer's head, the horns is, is one picture. Uh, no matter what we look at, we got to catch the whole thing. And by saying that I look at this point or that point, then all we're doing is setting our mind on that, such as a ball that we're going to aim right at that left horn or we're going to aim right at that right horn. And in turn, by aiming just at strictly one target, our mind is set on that point. We're focusing on one point instead of being able to see the whole objective, which is catching both horns, the neck, whatever it may be. Um, as we slowly move ourselves back, which obviously I'm more comfortable back farther, that's where we go back to what we worked on at the beginning. We'll start by just slowly keeping our swing slow with our, with aiming directly at the swinging right at the top of the horns and then swinging, finishing our throw, waiting to see our loop go all the way on the horns before we start our slack. By this, it allows the hondu of my rope to get all the way to the back of the left horn. What that does is it stops the movement of the rope forward and begins to bring it to the side and that's where it'll finish. Um, our rope will curl and come back up on its own right there. That's all from breaking our hand over after we clear the left horn and then we can slowly move back. No matter how far back we are, we still want to try and keep everything as smooth as we can, especially on the dump and then wait on that throw. Our slack is not near as important to us as what a lot of people think. Um, try to let your rope do the work for you and focus on slowing everything down to where you can see what's happening, what kind of work your rope is doing, where it's turning over and focus on those aspects of it is what I really try and work on on the dummy is when I deliver my rope reach and really extending my hand all the way out there in front of me and waiting for my rope to get to to its target. Um, personally, with the way the rodeos are, I like to rope a lot of spots and rope in every spot, taking multiple swings, keeping everything smooth, as well as flat-footed and just changing stuff, as I said earlier. Stand on, sometimes it requires a person, if it feels like you're in the left, in the left stirrup a lot, run into the steer. Stand on just your right foot when you rope the dummy and. Just as they say, change the change, pocket, change, put your change from one pocket to the other. Just get your mind off of something else. Um, thinking, thinking about too many parts of this at one time can really affect your roping ability as well. That's where, when I go back to the dummy, it's not so much trying to make it pretty, trying to make it snappy. Um, I'm just trying to work on the basics and keep everything open, smooth, and steady. Not, not on anything else besides that. Keep it open, smooth, steady, and wait until you can see, visually see your rope go on those horns before you make any other motions. And it'll all work out for itself. Uh, that being said, I also like to start back up once I've gone through all of that and focusing on my swings and try and sharpen myself up by roping with one swing from every, from every spot as well. That really, determines that first swing, keeping that first swing flat and smooth, trying not to feed too much and trying to keep everything slow and easy. And with some of this being said, I hope that it'll help give you guys all something to look forward to when you go back to the dummy and really just focus on your basics. Um, we all have them, whether they're different or not. If you have a big flat swing and an open loop and just finish your follow through across there, whether the big horns or small horns, uh, just be patient and be able to watch everything happen in front of you and hopefully the success comes with it. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to Spencer Mitchell's roping tips today. If you're liking what you hear, go ahead and give us a like, give us a comment, share the podcast, whatever you want to do. And let us know if there's other ropers, headers, or healers um, that you would like to hear some roping tips from. We hope you enjoy and we hope you're staying healthy and safe.